All right, everyone, let's get down to business. I've been meaning to do this review for a long time. Other things have come up and got in the way, but let's just get down to the business and say what a load of it is. Right, so if you're watching this, you're probably in the market looking at getting a sat-nav. Same predicament I was in, I was on my way to Spain. I was going on my own, uh, my phone had broke, I couldn't use that as a navigation device and so I was in a bit of a predicament. So I bit the bullet and uh, I bought the TomTom Tom Rider 550 and that was based on me watching reviews from other YouTubers. So you're probably thinking, what's with the aggy attitude? What's going on? Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan, but it probably ain't just the TomTom Tom Rider 550, it probably is the whole sat -nav thing. But let me just go through the story and talk about my experience of using the TomTom Tom Rider 550, the points that I didn't really like about it, the points I did like about it, and what other options are out there, and then you guys can make the choice yourself. So first off, picture this. I'm a day away from going to Spain. Um, I'm going to get the sat-nav. Got the sat-nav, got home, and it said four updates needed. Let's do the updates. Home Wi-Fi. Um, this device boasts, you don't need to plug it in, you know, it's all done built in Wi-Fi in this thing, you know, it can, it, you don't have to plug it into your laptop, so I thought, good, don't have to get the bloody laptop out and plug it in and download whatever, I can just go, yep, do the updates and it'll do it automatically. No, that's not what happened. Pushed, yes, accept the updates. It was laboured it was taking time it was then dropping in and out of wi-fi and i was like what the hell is going on went up got the laptop down right let's do it laptop way same problem dropping in and out i'm now on countdown to you know a day away of getting my ferry and getting over to spain so i'm like what the hell i spent that entire night trying different ways of connecting to Wi-Fi to get it to download, to downloading bits. The way it updates is, which you might want to know this for future reference for yourself, if you do decide to do an update and you're on the road, I would suggest don't do that because this is why. What it does is it wipes the system. So it doesn't just download the updates as you would imagine if you were updating any sort of, sort of software type thing. It actually wipes it all and downloads it afresh. What I was left with was a completely blank sat-nav. Turning it on after attempting to do an update, sorry, you can't turn it on, there's no maps on this device. I ended up downloading one map, I think it was Egypt or some place in Egypt or something, some country with relatively low megabytes. So I thought, just do it as quickly as I can, just get one map on there and then I can go from there. I ended up downloading each sort of individual map that I might need and I was like, I downloaded Spain, but if my journey took me into France, it wouldn't necessarily continue. It was like, oh, you need to use the other map. So you'd have to stop, load that map, and now you're in the French map. So you couldn't just go in and out. You had to say, I'm in Spain or I'm in France. And that's not what you want from a sat -nav. You don't want that lay blimming backward archaic technology. You want it to work for you. You're paying the £339 because you want it to bloody work. So what, what did I do? Well, I went back to JNS. I said, look, I've got a completely blank sat -nav. I've got a Egypt and Spain and a little bit of France or whatever on there. It won't update. I don't know what's going on. They gave me a brand new sat -nav, Didn't quibble. Just said, take this one. My ferry was like 4am or whatever it was the next day and I took the sat nav, took it home, got it out the box and I did not touch update. I left it as it was because I thought, don't need that drama. The, what I found with this sat nav was, you know how sat navs can just be flipping annoying? That's what it was like. It was just flipping annoying. The, the thing about TomTom Tom with the Rider 550 is they sell the, the thing that oh, you can make your route interesting, you can take uh, the hard route, the medium route, or the easy route, you know, the fastest or the most scenic, and all that sort of stuff. It works brilliantly when you use it in connection with the uh, TomTom Connect, or My Connect, or My Drive app, whatever it's called, I think it's My Drive. That app is flipping brilliant. You can set your routes out, you can drag pins around, you can say, oh, that looks like a good little road, I wanna go up there, and you can make it go up there. Absolutely brilliant. But yeah, if you're on the move and you're doing it, and you're doing it while you're on the bike, no, it's a load of shit. It don't work like that. It takes you 
on like the sat nav roads you know when you think why am i going down here that's what it does when you want when you do it via so the other thing that pissed me off was all the reviews from these bike enthusiasts bike vloggers and then basically say oh you know comes with some really good mounts made by ram you know the ram mounts that we all know we've heard the name well this is made from cast like a cast metal and it's really fiddly so when you're trying to get that on the bobble and you're trying to hold that and do that at the same time well it's a bit fiddly and you can you can drop it which i did so that's the first thing so that sits in there like that like a ball joint but when you're trying to get that and that like all done at the same time and you're holding it on the bike it is it is clunky it is flimsy the other thing about that is i think it's bloody ugly it's just a flipping u-bolt with two nuts on the end and a ball joint and then this sits on and does this now come on we're in 2020 2019 when i bought it there are much better design solutions out there than this and when you're paying 339 quid i think you bloody want it as well okay so next point is the charging people uh, have claimed that it's about six hours uh, riding time without charging and when i thought about it i thought oh do you know what i might i might not you know i'm not i didn't want to splice into the electrics on the bike and i thought if it's six hours riding time i could just use that i could charge it like you know when i stop off somewhere or i'm back in my hotel and charge it that night six hours at a time fine and then i thought do you know what no don't chance it don't push your luck you're gonna have to wire it in bearing in mind i was one day away so i was like oh all right i'll wire it in well I, don't, I didn't want to chop into the electrics on my bike so I was going to do a direct live and I thought well that's fine because I'm not going to leave the device on the bike anyway I'll just do direct live but saying that you get the you get the wires you get the connector but the booklet this booklet doesn't give you any instructions how to wire it in now I do a lot of my own maintenance I look after my bike I do whatever you know do all my own stuff so I'm, I'm all right but if you ain't got a clue there's not even a basic thing in here how to tell you what to do so you're screwed in that way so you want to you're going to be taking it to someone who knows what they're doing if you don't know what you're doing or you're going to make a bit of a mess of it so that's the other thing while we're on the point of charging the thing that pissed me off was the device itself actually has a charging port because when when it's off the bike you can charge it so when you're in your hotel room you can plug this into your normal USB plug and plug that into your device and you can charge it up when you're in your room. Well, I'm like, why can't I do that when I'm on the road? If I um, needed to, I could take this off the bike and charge it while I'm sitting in a coffee shop or something, you know, give it a little bit of charge like that, using my power pack. No, it's not bloody chargeable using a power pack. Because I was like, oh, I could just USB it. No, that's not an option which means you do have to use their wired in wire when you're using it on the bike the most recent problem i've had is this when i went when i went away i had a broken screen on an iphone 7 a standard iphone 7 and i was waiting to buy the iphone 7 plus off of a friend that's why i bought the sat nav is because my phone was broken and i couldn't use it as a navigation device but what i could do is I could use it when I got back to the hotel room with the uh, My Drive app or My Connect My Drive app, and I could plan my routes out, which was fantastic. And it worked, like I said, it worked seamlessly. You know, all the best roads and whatever, fantastic. Can't fault that app. Brilliant. I loved it. But when I got back, I upgraded my phone. This was an iPhone 7 Plus, the bigger version. Fantastic. Still the same model, but the Plus version. Thought, do you know what i'm going out on a ride this weekend i'm gonna go i'll go and visit the family um i'll take the scenic route let's use the my drive you know we'll we'll do that got onto it um it wouldn't connect would, would wouldn't work with the app and i was like what the hell is going on signed into the account blah blah whatever nothing's working i'm like oh the, i'm losing patience with this thing Got in touch with TomTom Tom customer support and they've come back saying, oh yeah, really sorry, um, there seems to be a problem um, with iPhone 7S and the compatibility with the TomTom Tom rider. Uh, we are working on to um, fix this issue. 
Just to let you know, at this point, I haven't tried the iPhone 7S with the TomTom. -tom. This is a couple of months ago now, it is now March, so this is two months later. I'm hoping it's working. Um, I haven't tried it, but just to let you know, to be aware that that is another potential issue. Right, so I think I've done enough bloody moaning. Let's get on to some of the good things. So what was bloody good about the thing? Well, first of all, it got me out of jail. I would not have been able to get around Spain and France and wherever else I ended up because my phone was kaput and I needed something. And it, it, you know, it got me around. The other thing it done, using that, that app, that My Connect, My Drive, whatever it is, the TomTom Tom app, I found some bloody good places. I wouldn't have found these places necessarily if I was just doing it on my own. It, every night when I got back to whatever hotel I was staying at, I would have a little look at the map, think how far down the road is that? Yeah, oh, that looks like a nice twisty little route. Stick it on there. Um, there was also some other like biker related points that people had put on there as well in the community. And I was like, yep, yeah, do that. And it was really good for that. I got to see some amazing places. If you want to see some of the things I saw, Check out my other video, which is uh, when you make spell and you uh, a trip to the Pyrenees. It's on my YouTube channel. You can watch that. Um, so it was bloody good for that. I really, I really, like, like I said, I can't, I can't fault that app. I thought it was brilliant. Um, the other good thing about it is, yes, it's waterproof. Obviously, it goes on the bike. Um, you don't have to put it in any cases, and so the screen and whatever you see is the screen there. It's also touch sensitive with your gloves, so you don't have to take your gloves off. Another good thing, if you're a biker, you know what a bloody pain it is having to take your gloves on and off to do stuff. Now you lot might think I'm mental, but I went round Spain with my Shuey X0 on my Triumph Street Twin, and I flipping love this helmet, so, you know, but it's obviously it's noisy it is a noisy road helmet i'm riding a twin engine which is noisy in itself i've got a uh, hide and hour dual sport tires on there which you get a certain amount of noise from the road on those tires and because i love my helmet i didn't want to put big external bluetooth devices and speakers on the inside so i was relying mainly on looking at the screen and listening what i could on the device and do you know what i must say considering all those factors it done a bloody good job okay so we spoke about the positives we've definitely spoke about the negatives let's talk about the alternatives apps on your phone now i did a trip previously uh traveled through england france belgium luxembourg and germany over a bank holiday weekend just using my mobile phone and a designated navigation app called SIGIC, that's S-Y-G-I-C. Must say, bloody brilliant app, um, although one thing it does do is it gets flipping up running that program, your phone burns up. Um, it was brilliant though, even though you download the maps and you're navigating on downloaded maps that are sitting on your phone, don't ask me how, but it seems, or it did for me, worked in real time. So. There was an accident that had happened on the motorway. It was telling me in so many meters there's gonna be an accident coming up, you'll see it. Beware, slow down, all that business. Um, and I mean, literally, people were crawling out of the car. That accident had just happened. Um, and that's why I think, potentially, things like these Tom Toms and that, they've gotta get up to speed. They've gotta start developing apps for people because 339 pounds for a device, they're a bit antiquated. Why do I need this that just does this when i've got when i've got this a mobile phone that can take photos do me emails uh book flights on it and do whatever else you know this is a multifunctional device and people want stuff that is small compact especially if you're a bloody biker you know you're, you're fighting for space as it is TomTom Tom and other, other companies like TomTom, Tom, I think, need to get onto the app market because buying a designated device like this is becoming outdated. And I must say, if I'd had my phone, my new updated phone in time, I wouldn't have bought a TomTom. Tom. I would have gone and downloaded Sigic or a like-minded app. The next thing I moaned about, design. Now, that's my trade, I'm a designer. Not a product designer, but a graphic designer. And so things, aesthetics, how things look, feel, for me, it's important. This little ram mount 
pissed me off because it nearly scratched me tank. Well, I nearly scratched me tank with it, but it's because it was too fiddly. It wasn't, it wasn't, you know, it's not, not my idea of function and form and, you know, aesthetically pleasing at the same time. Companies like Quadlock, I mean, even the way it's presented in the packaging, it clamps around your handlebar, you've got various size handlebar um, mounts so you can fit it on whatever size bike you've got. Multifunctional swivel oh, top, it don't fall off in real life, it's just in the box. Um, connects seamlessly to the back of your case, bunk, and then you've got everything in one place. I mean, you must have all seen these uh, quad lock systems. Um, I'll put a link in the video you'll see there. But that's the way it's moving. That is the way that technology is moving. People want function and form as a whole package. You know, the design process in that has been thought about. Um, whereas this ram mount for me is just an afterthought. It's like, well, how are we going to get that on the bike? Oh, just put that ball joint on there. All right then. I mean, it's got a big ugly flipping U bolt on it with two bolts sticking out, and it just it ruins the whole look of my bike. When you've spent so long making your bike your bike, personalising it to be yours, you know, buying all those little accessories and just sort of stylising it to your taste. The last thing you want to do is slap a big U-bolt on with two bolts on it like that and be like, yep, yeah, I'm coming, everybody. No. I think if it was me doing this again, I'd go down the, the phone route. There's plenty of options out there now with um, navigation devices. You've got things, like I said, like the quad lock mounts. Phones nowadays are waterproof. Um, most bikes have got USB chargers in them now, or you can even fit one on, like, cheaply. And I just think it's a much better solution than going for something like this. So anyway, I hope you found that helpful. Subscribe to the channel. I've got more videos coming up. Safe riding, and I'll see you soon.